Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to discuss on the common test EMC standard that you will do for a consumer electronics product. I will mainly focus on the AC main. Okay, so on the AC main, you need to do this test IEC 61000-4-11. This test is actually the voltage dip, voltage variation, and also the interrupt that you will be going to do at the AC main. Next, okay, will be 61000-3-2. Okay, so this will be the harmonic. Okay, so this will help us to monitor the current harmonics that generate by your EUT that will disturb our mains. And then next will be 61000-3-3. Okay, so this will be the freaker. Okay, so later on you will take a look what is actually a freaker. And last but not least, let's concentrate on this IEC 61000-4-2. Okay, so this will be electrostatic discharge. Okay, we are going to take a look on these four EMC test and measurement that will be performed uh, for a consumer electronics product. This will be the part 46 series discussion on EMC consideration. So if you're keen to know more about EMC consideration, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. I guess this will be very helpful if you're keen to explore or know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please feel free to give me suggestion or maybe also feedback so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. This is what I have shown it to you on the part 45 series discussion. This slide here actually shows the commonly used EMC standard for a consumer electronics product which does not have any wireless communication functionality. Okay, so all the tests is as shown over here. So this is your EUT. You actually make this EUT. Okay, on the two part here, you can see that EUT has this AC main. Okay, so this AC main is used to power on your EUT. On the other end, which is on the left hand side, I have this IO port. So basically this DUT, okay, let's assume that there are actually two cables. One will be for the AC main, another one will be for the IO port. Okay, so today, okay, we are going to focus this test. Okay, so today I'm going to discuss what is actually a AC voltage dip variation and also interrupt. Basically, this will be the IEC 61000-4-11. I'm also going to discuss these two. Okay, so this is harmonic and this is flicker. Okay, so basically this will be the three tests that will be done at the AC main. Okay, next I am going to discuss also on this six IEC 61000-4-2. Okay, so this is actually an ESD electrostatic discharge. Okay, so this will be the test that I'm going to discuss on this video. As I mentioned, okay, the first test that I'm going to discuss will be this IEC 61000-4-11, which is an AC voltage dip variation and also interrupt. What are all these tests? Okay, so this test actually describes three different tests. Firstly will be voltage dip. Okay, voltage dips are defined as sudden reduction in voltage okay, to lower voltage for a short period of time followed by a recovery to the original voltage. So from here, you can imagine that the voltage actually dip suddenly at a very short interval. And what I want to see is basically whether your EUT still can function or not. So basically, this will be the first under the voltage dip. Next will be on the voltage variation. Okay, under this voltage variation is basically, I will gradually change the supply voltage, not only on the low side, but also on the high side. Basically, I will change the voltage either high or lower than the rated voltage. Okay, the duration okay, can be either short or long. Okay, so basically, I will do this test again is to see whether my D 
DUT can function this kind of test and all. And then last but not least, we talk about shock interruption. Okay, shock interruptions are defined as a disappearance of AC voltage for a short period of time. Okay, which means that I totally remove away the AC supply. Okay, typically the time will not exceed one minute. Okay, next will be quickly followed by a recovery to the original voltage. Okay, shock interrupt can be considered as voltage dip to zero volt. Okay, so it's equivalent to voltage dip to zero volt. And a very short interval, okay, I totally remove away my AC supply. Again, I want to see whether my DUT still can function or not. So basically, this will be the first test under the IEC 61000-4-11. Next, okay, I'm going to discuss on this harmonic, IEC 61000-3-2, and also the Freaker IEC 60-3-3. So what are these? Okay, there has been a fundamental problem with mains pollution by harmonics currents, and therefore, this IEC 61000 dash 3 dash 2, which is for the harmonic, they specify the limits of the harmonics component of the input current, which can be produced by equipment tests under specific condition into the public supply system. Okay, so in short here, okay, so this thing we are going to plug okay, into the public supply system. And over here, because the DUT that you make, okay, they basically can generate a lot of harmonic current and this harmonic current can be a disturbance to the public supply system and have for this 61000-3-2 actually specific what is the limitation of the harmonic current that your EUT can generate so as to ensure to, public, uh, to protect the public supply system. Next will be on this IEC 61000-3-3, which is the Freaker. Okay, electrical product may produce load fluctuation, and therefore, this IEC 61000-3, okay, which is the Freaker, is an EMC standard to have the limitation of voltage fluctuation, and Freaker impressed on the public low voltage system. Okay, so what happened here is basically, again, when you build a, EUT or DUT, okay, you, you will have a chances that you will actually have a fluctuation of load, okay, which means that your impedance can increase or decrease with time. And therefore, when your voltage okay, actually will be affected because when your load change, when they actually fluctuated, the voltage also fluctuated. And when this happened here, okay, let's say this is a light, okay, then you will have some flicker effect. I guess you understand what I mean. So basically, you will have some flicker effect. So therefore, this standard 61000-3-3, the flicker, can okay, ensure that this do not happen. So basically, they ensure that the amount of fluctuation okay, on the voltage is specified under this situation. And hence, when you actually minimize the voltage fluctuation, you won't have this flicker impression okay, on the public low voltage system. Okay, so therefore, this standard actually specified condition Procedure and limit of voltage change that may be produced by equipment under test. Okay, the last test that I'm going to discuss will be this ESD, electrostatic discharge, okay, which is classified as IEC 61000-4-2. Okay, what are all these? Okay, this IEC 61000-4-2 is a test standard that outlines electromagnetic immunity requirement for electronic equipment when exposed to electrostatic discharge generate from a body, body or metal objects. Okay, the standard assumes that the source is an electrified human body discharge and testing simulate the current waveform generate in those conditions. So in short, okay, so let's say we rub against our hand, we generate actually electrostatic and basically when we touch onto the DUT, Okay, this can be passed on and may be harmful to our EUT. So basically, this is what he mentioned here. ESD actually happen everywhere between high density electrical component found in almost everything that is manufactured today. The occurrence of ESD is impossible to predict. So the best method is to take as much prevention measure to prevent damage or malfunction when it does occur. Okay, so this is what it means here. So basically, as I explained on 
electrostatic discharge. Basically, our body, for example, can provide a spark okay, onto your equipment under test, and this can cause your equipment under test to be malfunction or sometimes also reset. So basically, we want to make our design robust. Okay, so therefore, we shoot the ESD gun okay, to ensure that this thing will be minimized, as mentioned that we can't predict ESD. So therefore, the best method is to prevent this to upset our design on the EUT. Okay, so again, let's come to a quick conclusion here. Okay, so I have done the discussion okay, that is done on the AC main. I have also done on the discussion okay, where we actually do at the chassis of your EUT. Okay, so this one, two, three, four tests is basically what I have done for this video. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.